Hey YouTube land, it's Tychondorus here doing another action figure review and this time it's for the new 2018 Shane Black movie The Predator, uh, Fugitive Predator, released by NECA. Now, before I get on to the figure, I'll just give a brief description of the box. So it comes in the, this uh, window style box. Uh, you can open the lid on and it has the Predator showcased here in the right hand side of the box and then on the left hand side there is an image of the Predator itself. What's funny is if you look down the very bottom left hand corner, I'll just bring that up close to the camera so if you can see it, they actually used one of their Jason from Friday 13th figure as a kind of a fallen uh, human and you can see the legs. I'm pretty sure it's the leg of Arnie from the the first Predator movie. I don't think it's one of the Colonial Marines because they have the armor plates going up in the legs. It looks more like um, the Jungle Assault Arnie. And then you have uh, the Predator in a kind of cool pose in the on the actual photo. Flipping around to the back of the box, you have more images of the Predator just in different poses. And then you have a brief, brief write-up saying the Predator, Fugitive Predator. Predators have been genetically evolving themselves to be stronger, smarter, and more lethal than ever before. When a young boy accidentally activates a mysterious alien device and becomes the target of these enhanced predators, only his father and the most unlikely ragtag of crazy ex-military agents can save him and the human race from obliteration. And it just gives a brief, uh, includes two interchangeable heads, two interchangeable forearms, four hands, four wrist blades and articulated shoulder cannon. Then you just got the movie Predator logo on the side. And then just like um, production images are produced by and any legal east stuff at the bottom and then at the top you got just more images of the Predator and it says 17 plus. Um, so I have seen the film uh, so I won't go into spoiler territory until the very last of this review there's a few things I kind of want to point out that how that I'm kind of thinking about but for the majority of the review I will review the figure and I'll let you know when I'm going into the spoilers for the movie so you can you know skip ahead or uh, stop watching then so figure wise he's very nicely sculpted he does come with his the two bare arms attached to his wrists in the box. Oh, sorry, he doesn't actually. He comes with the two uh, gauntlet arms attached in the box with the closed fists, which are these. And the way they work is you just pull off the wrist that you want to pull off. And it's very, they're quite tough actually. I might try it on the side. It'd be a little easier. They are a peg system. If I can do it on camera, I will. I might have to pop it off camera. There we go. They are quite tight when you have the wrists on. So let me just see if I can get that to... So you can see it's a peg system. Now I do know that the left, or sorry, the right peg is actually slightly loose on my one. It likes to drop a bit. And when you do get this guy in the box, just be careful of the joints. Some of them might be stuck with paint. So you need to either give it a bit of uh, heat with a hair dryer or a bit of hot water. Just get the joints to move. But um, I did manage to get them to move on my one. After a little uh, coaxing. But all in all, he's quite nice. So the way he comes in the box is the wrist gauntlets without the blades attached. Uh, the two closed fists and the actual enclosed helmet. Um, I prefer the kind of open, the unmasked head. I think it looks really, really cool. Again, it's just a peg system, so you pull off the head and replace it. And you can just see the inside there of the mask. You can see the peg, where it pegs in underneath. So, is it articulation-wise? He has quite a lot of articulation. So he has standard kind of ball joints in the shoulders. His shoulders can go out that much. Now, they are hindered by the sculpt here. They can go forward that much and then go backwards. You could get a 360 out of it, but you'd have to push these all the way around. And, you know, 
it is slightly hindered by these shoulder pads. They are on a rubber, they're, like, they're more rubber material than the rest of the body. So you do have that. Head is on a ball joint, so you get some great range of movement on it. You have his plasma caster or cannon, shoulder cannon, which is on a little articulation point. It doesn't rotate except for the base of the cannon here. It doesn't rotate at the base of where it connects to the shoulder. But uh, you can get some quite nice uh, posability out of it for such a small thing. I would recommend caution with it though because it can, it is quite a small piece and it is more solid than the shoulder guard so it could potentially snap. So I would be wary of that. Um, as for the rest of the arms, he has dual joints in the elbow. So he has a swivel just at the base of the elbow and then he has another swivel here where the wrist gauntlet attaches attaches so you can rotate the wrist gauntlet around and his hands if I just take off the wrist the wrist blades just come out like that they just peg in I'm sure you can see that you can just peg in with kind of a little plug and they just plug into it's probably easier if I take off the hand and bring it closer so there's these two little pegs on the wrist gauntlet. The way they work in film is they're actually built into the gauntlet. They're not, unlike the older Predators, they're not like an actual piece, a blade that comes out from a kind of a se section. They actually fold up right into the gauntlet, which is kind of a nice, neat new look to it. You can, I'll just take the hands off, or the blades off for this, because what you can do, is you can take the closed fist off, as you can see, the fist is on a swivel with a hinge joint. You can take that off, you can take the open hand out of the, the forearm, again same peg system. So you can actually peg the kind of more open hand into the into the wrist gauntlet or the arm with the gauntlet on it. You can just plug the uh, blades back in. They can be a little tricky. I do recommend caution with the blades as well just in case you snap the plastic in there. The blade themselves are more solid plastic but you can get the wrist blade to uh, connect up to the or the wrist blade at hand with the open palm instead of having closed fist. So it looks pretty cool. Um, I said uh, one thing I've noticed is this can't like to slide down a bit on the peg. It's a bit loose, but uh, you could probably fix that with a bit of um, floor polish or something like that. Uh, he does have an ab crunch, quite a good ab crunch. You can go crunch down that much, back that much, with the head range of movement. You can actually make him look that much up and back at the same time. So you can get some great posing out of him. His skirt piece, his armour here and here are all kind of rubbery. He does have a waist swivel as well as the ab crunch. He has an upper swivel as well with that crunch. He has splits, so he can do the splits that much. His legs have kind of, um, uh, it's kind of like a guide, so kind of they slightly peg into place as they're moving. He has an upper thigh swivel, he has dual jointed knees, and he has a swivel just at the top of the uh, knee here. And then he has the ball jointed feet, so he can go down, tilt to the side, and have great range of movement. So all in all, he has quite a lot of posability on him. Um, if I just pop his head off and put on the mask head, just, I know I'm doing it off camera. But it's a bit easier to do it without the camera. So there he is with his masked head, and that has just as much range of movement as the unmasked head. So you can get just some really cool posing out of it as well. So it's quite a nice figure. And of course, he does have the two peg holes on the bottom of the feet for a stance. He doesn't come with a stand. Um, he is pretty light on weaponry in the sense that he only has the wrist blades and the shoulder cannon. Um, 
I would like to have seen him include a grasp, uh, a, a grip hand, which would have been nice so you could give him some of the older Predator weapons from like the previous Kenner figures, or not Kenner, uh, previous NECA figures. For example, like the uh, Shuriken Blade or the um, the Plasma Caster Weaponry that came with the, what's it called, the Blade Fighter, the kind of big weapons that come off, that you can pull off that would kind of be cool to kind of give to him. And then just for another, just for a size or a scaling, here he is with a measuring tape. I'll just get into it without burning my hands on the light I have above me. Bear with me a moment. So he stands a little about eight and a half inches tall, about nearly nine inches, which is true to form because they are they seem to be making the predator figures slightly bigger. Um, I did look at him compared to the very first NECA Predator and the NECA P1 Jungle Hunter is tiny compared to him. He's about a head shorter. So there is a bit of a scale difference, sorry, right, between the two. So all in all, I think it's a fantastic figure. I do like it. Now I do recommend picking it up and I'm looking forward to getting the upgrade predator, which is the other predator from the film that um, shows up in the film. Now um, before I go any further, I just want to note that this may be potential spoilers. Um, but um, I did see the film. I thought it was really good. I thought it was enjoyable. There's some there's some questionable stuff in it, but all, all overall, I thought it was a good film. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, you can either stop watching now or um, you know. You can fast forward to the end of the video, I'll probably still be rabbiting on about the spoilers by then. But um, I do recommend picking up this figure if you're a fan of Predator. He's a great figure. Even if you're not a fan of the movie, he is a great figure to add to your collection. He does look a good bit different to standard Predators, but then again, it's sort of... Give, there is a bit of an explanation in the movie as to why they're, they look different. And... Uh, as I say in my videos, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe to my videos. But uh, on to the kind of spoiler territory now. So, I thought the, the film was really well done. I did like, there were some great kind of comedic jokes and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things that kind of struck me, now I could be completely thinking about this the wrong way, is that the designs for the Predator, for this, the upgrade Predator, even though it's not, 100% looks like this. Um, it kind of reminded me of this guy, which is an old Kenner Night Recon Predator, was called. It seemed to throw, have a lot of kind of throwbacks to it. The very the little amount of armor it has, except for like the gauntlets and the legs. Uh, no mask as well, which was even though this originally was going to be called a different Predator and it had a, they were designing a mask to go with it. This one came out w without a mask. Um, but the other thing that kind of reminded me of this Predator from the film is the actual wrist blade or wrist gauntlet on the upgrade Predator actually has this sort of style cannon type thing where it comes out of the wrist gauntlet. The plasma gun or the plasma cannon is in the wrist gauntlet and comes out and fires, which is kind of reminded me of that. And then there is a scene at the very end of the film. Now... I don't want to kind of really spoil it because it is something that a lot of people are kind of ticked off over about what, like, what were they going for kind of thing or what were they kind of attempting to go for. To me, the thing that comes out at the very end of the film reminds me of very much of a cancelled, another Kenner cancelled figure called, I think it's called Razor, Razor Marine. Um... If you're not sure what it is, take a look it up. It's basically, it's basically a marine wearing kind of armor, but it's spe it looks specific to like uh, kind of predator, alien versus predator, predator kind of um, genre. So it kind of reminded me of that. I think it was kind of more. It kind of gave that whole comic book feel, kind of the dark horse comic style to it. Um, I thought the film was great. There was some really good bits in it there was a bit cheesy bits in it and uh i thought 
uh, Thomas Jane did a brilliant job in it. He had some of the funniest lines in it. Um, in, in, in the sense that his character was supposed to have Tourette's and just this random stuff. I, I, I'm almost convinced they just told him to go ahead and say whatever the hell he wanted to make it as funny as possible. So uh, props to him. And overall, I thought it was a great film. Um, I do recommend watching it if you can get a chance to watch it. De definitely head out and watch it. I know there's a lot of naysayers going, oh, this is not my Predator, blah, blah, blah. Um, Predator has completely changed to what they want to do an MCU style thing with it. Like, well, that's the most the way that most films are going these days. So they're trying to do like a, a Marvel universe or their own universe of whatever genre they can get. So, but, but saying that, um, I do recommend picking this figure up, even if you're uh, not a fan of the film. It is a great figure. Um, so, I do uh, recommend him. Great sculpting from NECA, as per usual. So, all in all, good figure. And that's my... I won't go any more into spoiler territory in the f about the film. If you want to see it, go ahead and go see it. I do recommend it. It's out in cinemas now at the moment. As, as of the time of this recording, it's just come into the cinema. So, hopefully, it'll do well enough to warrant a sequel. Uh, I did think Shane Black did a decent, reasonable job with it. Um, one of my only kind of main gripes is the difference between the Predator dogs from Predators, or the Hellhounds they're called in Predator, and the, the ones that are in the new film. I um, kind of wish they had they looked more alike, but um, overall I thought it was a great film. So there you go guys, hopefully you liked my video. And uh, hopefully you like my um, fan theory, I, su I suppose, on the idea behind the film. So, there you go, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed my videos. And please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Cheers, guys.